Hello, and welcome back to another Millennial Minute, our hot topic, big tech. Does it rule our lives or can we live without it? You've already heard from our guests, a friend of Bold and a political strategist, AJ Bruno, and joining him is John Meyer. He's a tech expert and a managing partner at Starship Capital. So John, we'll start with you. Breaking up big tech, that doesn't that have major ramifications for the way we live? It absolutely, you know, does have some, but I would say what's interesting when companies are broken up is, you know, traditionally they have uh, massive differences in the outcome within the internal organization. Uh, and, and one of the biggest goals when a company is broken up into smaller companies is to maintain the level of user experience and, and customer happiness amongst the general public. And so I'd say it's, it's unlikely uh, for, you know, the general public to be uh, significantly disappointment, uh, disappointed if a company like Amazon is broken up. I think there are actually a lot of benefits to that. Yeah, AJ, you know, conservatives technically, you know, aren't, aren't for government intervention. Do you think that conservatives are turning the corner on that and think it's time to break up big tech? Well, big tech is uh, targeting conservatives. So I think uh, these are times that probably call for something like that. Um, I generally don't agree with government intervention in these things, but we have a handful of vast corporations that are basically acting in unison. Um, you just look at, for instance, that parlor app. Uh, Amazon, Google, and Apple all said they're not carrying it. Uh, they rely on Amazon Web Services. And so the company is looking like it's probably gonna have to fold because of that. That could happen to any company they disagree with. If all these groups are working together, um, you could say it's their, you know, their prerogative. Um, as individual companies, they can do what they want, but they have the power to destroy uh, something people are creating and participating in if they don't like the speech that's on it. I think that's bad. And uh, if big tech is ruling our lives in terms of uh, playing uh, you know, uh, speech police, then uh, we need to do something about it. So John, the US is the superpower though, really because of the technology companies that we have, right? So will this stifle innovation? Cause we wanna walk the fine line, right? I like my smartphone, I like Facebook. We depend on it as a brand here at Bold TV. How do we make sure we're not, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot here? Well, I think, you know, as always competition fuels innovation. And so if we're stifling competition like a company like uh, Facebook has or Amazon has with small businesses not being allowed to uh, even post certain products on Amazon if Amazon is a competitor, you know, that is stifling innovation and, and stifling the, the rate of the US's growth. So I think it's actually very clear and pretty straightforward that um, if, if we break up some of these companies, we will likely see even more innovation because this is a country based off of startups and small businesses that have innovative ideas and, and fuel to the fire. And if they can't uh, function properly uh, because of this big competition or a lack of competition and, and monopolistic power, then um, I think it's, it's putting us actually behind. Yeah, AJ, so you agree with that, don't you? Yeah, I do agree with that, with that in principle. Um, but look, I, I don't know what's happened to some of these companies. We used to have tech companies like Microsoft and Apple and, and whatnot that were innovative. They didn't get political, um, you know, and now we have all these companies that are spying on us. You can't have Alexa around without her gathering information, telling you what to do. Um, we're even going as far as to the point where we actually have tech that is endangering our national security. I mean, there's hundreds of millions of kids that basically use a Chinese spy app on a daily basis which is ridiculous and no one cares. Um, so when we talk about big tech, uh, I think uh, we are really going down a way that uh, it's, it's not like it used to be. It used to be something which benefited us more than hindered us. And I think we're going in a direction where we can have a lot of negative for society. I mean, tech can be good or bad, depending how it's used. I think we're leaning towards it being used more for bad these days. And, and that's not good. So John, I'll give you the last word. So what you say is actually based in reality, right? A lot of people say because we reined in Microsoft back in the 1990s with the antitrust case that bred Google, made Apple grow, brought Facebook along. Do you think it's time again to restrict the big players to bring on a whole new generation of digital companies that can help solve our massive problems in our society? Well, you know, I think it's it's actually already started in some ways. You know, a lot of the public and especially amongst politicians uh, backlash against big top companies, especially Facebook, has actually forced Facebook to stop making uh, as many acquisitions, thus making them larger 
uh, as they have in, in previous years. Um, but it's, it still is a very lighthearted way to enact government power. I think the more proper way, and I think the most likely outcome with a Facebook and a Google where both companies are clearly uh, monopolies, uh, Amazon as well, I'd say, uh, where there's no real direct significant competitor is that they will likely be brought up in, in antitrust cases um, and, and somehow broken up, especially by the new uh, Biden administration. Well, that will be interesting to watch on that note. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Be sure to follow us on all those big tech platforms, you know, at Bold TV. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, and we have our own website, boldtv.org. We also manage genbiz.org. Be sure to follow us. On that note, I'm David Grasso, and we'll be back with many spirited conversations just like this one.